Hi students! In class today we were thinking about another literary theory that we could use to approach the novels that we're reading this semester. And that theory is Marxist theory, uh, or Marxism as it's more commonly known. And we talked about the history of Marxism and uh, how this idea has developed a little bit both in Europe and in the United States um, over the past 150 or so uh, years, roughly speaking. And one of the reasons why we might use this literary theory and apply it to a text is because it draws our attention to uh, what we are calling uh, class struggles or struggles between people at at different places uh, within society. And under Marxist literary theory, uh, these classes are generally broken down into two groups. There's the proletariat and the bourgeoisie. And the proletariat, uh, generally speaking, are the people who do the grunt work in society. I made the analogy in class about the show Dirty Jobs on the Discovery Channel. Um, and on that show, the host uh, interviews all these people who have these really uh, unfortunate jobs most of the time. They're cleaning out sewers, or they're you know greasing up uh, large pieces of equipment, or they have uh, they have jobs that are very labor intensive, very dangerous sometimes, um, and which most of us would probably not want to do for an extended period of time. Uh, well, under Marxist literary theory, these are kind of proletariat jobs. These are jobs that are, that are very, very physically demanding, usually dangerous, um, and which tend not to pay uh, very well. And we can tr contrast that with what we're calling the bourgeoisie, and under, you know, or the bourgeoisie kind of make up what we think of as the middle class in America. In fact, the, world, the word middle class tends to usually be, mean bourgeoisie. And these are people who tend to have jobs that are less physically uh, demanding um, and who tend to use a lot of the products that are created and, and built by the proletariat under Marxist literary theory. And the reason, the reason that it's interesting to consider how these two groups may interact uh, under Marxist literary theory is because it gives us insight uh, into some of the novels that we're reading. Uh, for example, when we were looking at Frankenstein, one of the questions came, that came up was, well, how can Frankenstein afford to travel all of these places and never talk about money? Uh, how can he do all of these things and never have a concern for you know making a living or getting a job? Uh, he obviously has has some money coming from some source. And then we might also look at a book like um, uh, Jane Eyre, uh, in which we you know, see these, these class struggles that occur when people are in um, kind of oppressed positions within society, and what happens when people aren't happy with uh, you know, very dangerous, physically demanding jobs. How do they interact with people who have jobs that are perhaps less dangerous and less physically demanding, which pay uh, better in the long run. Um, and Marxist literary theory, generally speaking, draws our attention to these struggles or these conflicts or these issues that may arise in a society. Um, and we talked about how that may play out in a number of novels that we've read this semester. Um, so again, as was the case with uh, my comments on feminist literary theory and psychoanalysis, I'm being very general here, but uh, that's because we're just getting introduced to this concept and you'll find if you do choose to research this literary theory, um, that there are a number of ways you can go with it. But the real importance of this in our class is, is simply that uh, this is a theory that takes up the issues of how different classes interact uh, in a classed society um, and how it is um, um, these interactions may lead to social tensions or may lead people to situations where they um, try very desperately to move from either the proletariat to the bourgeoisie or in situations where the bourgeoisie may find themselves uh, on the other side of the coin uh, being uh, pushed down into, into the proletariat arena is the word I'll use. So that's Marxist literary theory in a very small nutshell, but it should be enough to get us started uh, and to get us thinking um, um, as we are drafting and thinking about topics uh, in our course. So there you are. All right, well, I look forward to seeing uh, you in class next time, and I will talk with you soon.